Hey guys, good morning. It is bright and early and we have come down here to the Texas coast to participate in something really, really special. And I tell you, this day is only gonna get better from here. Down on Padre Island. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. North Padre Island is this stretch of coast right here. Here, it becomes South Padre Island. West is Texas, east is the Gulf. If you're coming from the heart of Corpus, well, it's only about 30 minutes. Just ride the coastal breeze or a dolphin. <laughs> But the reason we've come here so early is to take part in a one-of-a-kind Texas opportunity. A baby sea turtle release on the Padre Island National Seashore. These happen every summer on special mornings. But for the folks that oversee this program, well, it's a year-round passion. And this is Dr. Shaver, who's been doing it for 37 years. This is something pretty special. I think Texans and maybe the country don't often associate sea turtles with Texas. The numbers are coming back. I mean, this really is one of our state animals, right? It really is. They're part of our natural heritage, and we're seeing both the Kemp's Ridley numbers and the green sea turtle numbers coming up, and we're really excited about that so that more and more Texans can see these beautiful animals in the future. That's awesome. Our Texas turtle, the Kemp's Ridley, is the most endangered sea turtle species on Earth. So to help its numbers grow, rangers and staff patrol the beach for nests and move any found eggs to a hatching facility where they can care for them until it's time for their release, which is the part we get to watch. So how critical did it get there for the Kemp's Ridley? It was very critical. The worldwide population got down to only 702 nests for the whole year in 1985. This year has been just uh, off the charts. Uh, we didn't just break records, we smashed records. Wow, that's yeah, good to hear. Yeah, yeah, we have 352 Kemp's Ridley nests found in Texas this year. And for the park, we've had 218 Kemp's Ridley nests and our previous record was 117. Wow. So we beat that record by more than 100 nests. That's incredible. Considering it was humans who almost made this turtle extinct, well, we gotta do everything we can to help it bounce back. And that's why there are nets and flaggers keeping all these birds back. Hey, they don't call baby turtles the Oreo cookie of the ocean for nothing. It's thought that under natural conditions with no protection measures, about one in 400 eggs will produce an individual that survives to adulthood. So it's really tough odds. We know that we raise the odds some because we find the nests, we get a great hatching success, we protect all the hatchings while they're on the beach, but then they do face the threats that are out there in the marine environment, so they will take their toll. So we can't say exactly how much we're raising the odds by, but we know we are. Oh, absolutely. Having us all here to cheer them on has got to help too, right? They've released the baby sea turtles and they are making a mad dash for the ocean. We definitely have some that are faster than other ones. Then we have lazy, oh, there's the first one in the ocean. Hey, they made it. I mean, you can imagine what this ride feels like. They're, they're going down this sandy beach and then this wave, boom, crashes into them, sweeps them up and then sweeps them into the ocean. It's sort of like, ah, yeah. This is what these flippers were made for. Helping a species recover from near extinction. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. All right, here it is, last one. Big wave coming in. Go, little buddy, go, little buddy. Hey! There we go. This is something really special to be a part of. That's amazing. <laughs> And just like that, over a hundred baby turtles make it to the next leg of their journey. Hopefully they'll be back someday to lay more eggs and help the circle continue. As the sun comes up, well, it's time to learn a bit more about this barrier island. It's truly one of the most special places in Texas and the U.S., as it's only one of 10 national seashores run by the National Park Service. To tell us more, here's park ranger Buzz Botts. Can you explain a little bit from, I guess, a geological standpoint of what a barrier island is? A barrier island is really nothing more than a sandbar <laughs> okay. that separates the sea from the mainland. 
Luckily, President Kennedy, he actually kind of got the ball rolling to set this place aside because that these islands, because they're so beautiful, they were all developing. Mm -hmm. The whole of the core of the island is undeveloped and it's actually the longest stretch of undeveloped barrier island beach property left in the world. That's amazing. Let that soak in a bit. The longest undeveloped barrier island in the world, protected forever. I mean, we do think of big wide open spaces when we think of Texas, just not really coastal wide open spaces. Yeah, well, I wish I could take all the credit, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's really a magnificent place and most of the work was just done naturally. It's beachfront wilderness at its finest. And if you're worried there might be nothing to do without all the beach shops and restaurants, well, think again. Well, aside from fishing, you're going to see a lot of beautiful birds out there. Photography's popular. There's a large number of people that just like the peace and quiet that they can find down here. I'm really thankful for the good fortune to be able to work in such a beautiful place. Yeah, we're all fortunate just to be able to visit a place like this. The beach has all the sandy fun you might expect, but there's one other activity here in the park that we're gonna try out on the backside of this barrier island. All right, so it's kind of like North Padre Island has two beaches. You got the beach that faces the Gulf of Mexico, and then you got this one on the bay side that faces the Bay Laguna Madre. And back here, you'll find one of the most popular places on earth to windsurf. Look at these dudes out on the water. I wanna do that. Oh yeah, we're gonna try that. Could fail miserably, but hey, no fear here on the Day Tripper. Now why would I think I might fail? Well, you remember that last time that I tried wind-powered sports in the Corpus area? Good, because I don't either. But this is gonna be different. I can feel it. So we're headed to World Winds Windsurfing, and this is instructor Randy Rhodes. This is like a primo spot to do this, yeah, right? Yeah, it's kind of a hidden gem here. This is one of the top places in the world to come and windsurf. Because we have a unique setup with the way the wind is here, we're in the national park and there's nothing blocking the wind. Really? Especially like out here we do a lot of teaching and stuff too, so the way the water is, it's shallow, it's knee deep to waist deep uh -huh. where we teach, and then even out in the deepest part is about chest deep, so. Cool, so, so you're saying this is a good place to learn? Yes, very All good. All right, place. well I've never done this in my life, so be. I'll be learning a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So the wind comes from the beach here. You're gonna always windsurf with your back to the wind. And you're gonna always windsurf across the wind. All right, so the first thing we're gonna learn how to do is get yourself up into the neutral position and then move into what's called the sailing position. And I'm up. Hey, that wasn't so bad. I'm sailing! All right. Looking good, my man, looking good. Sure you've never done this before? This is like on a Top Gun. I'm gonna whiz the tower. Yeah! Look how dangerously close I'm getting! Rocky, you okay? Whoops, spoke too soon and just took out Rod's face. So, riding is one thing, controlling, totally different. No! Almost had it! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Woo! Windsurfing! It's a lot more finesse than I expected. I want to go fast like these guys. But you know, you got to take it a little slower. Perfect, keep sailing at that angle for a little while. This is awesome. I don't know if I look like I'm going a million miles an hour, but I feel like I'm going a million miles an hour. Me? The wind in the bay. Dude, you just feel cool, man. This is incredible. Next time, I'm gonna upgrade to the fast boards. Still, this is so cool. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. And while the National Park area is wilderness, not too far away, you'll find one of the most vibrant beach cities in Texas that goes by the name Corpus Christi. Okay, so now we're back to civilization. You know, you spend a whole lot of time down in the park and you forget that just a couple miles up the road is like this big tourist town. Souvenir shops, good restaurants, there's actually a Schlitterbahn here. But I mean, look, you know, we are in beachy tourist land. There's your proof right there. 
a souvenir shop with a giant shark out front. Every good beach tourist town's got one. Hey, Mom, look what I built. Yeah, that's, that's not, yeah. Busted and still starving. And there's only one place for a seasoned surfer like myself to go. The Surfside Sandwich Shop. <laughs> oh, I like it. Look, beach sandwich shop should always have plenty of surf stickers. And then check out this artwork. It's a cool laid back spot that feels made for a beach town. After all, it was born on the beach. This is Kim Parlaska, who with her husband keep this place chillin' and grillin' some of the best beach grub on the coast. Is this the official food of surfing? Sandwiches? <laughs> right. Yes, it is. <laughs> what is y'all's take on sandwiches that y'all do here? Well, really, it's not just the sandwiches, but it's the food in general. So first of all, it's fresh. We're making everything from scratch every day. And then secret ingredient, which of course we all know is love. You gotta love what you do. <laughs> you gotta have the passion for it. You gotta take the pride in it. And the other thing is, you know, we don't want people ever to leave any of our places hungry. So we've actually been accused of having, oh, your sandwiches are too big. It's okay. Is Bring that a, a problem for people? Bring a friend. Yeah. Share. The more the merrier. Man, there are so many options. I wouldn't mind getting two sandwiches, but I better narrow it down. So what's your favorite sandwich that you guys have on the menu? Okay, so our Cuban, right? We do a 12 hour roasted pork and then it's got our homemade Cuban sauce, which has got a little bit of a zing to it. I always okay. tell people, do you like Rubens? And they're like, yeah, I'd like them to get our Rubens. This because is you're gonna it. love yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we're coastal, so you're gonna throw some shrimp. We have a great ahi tuna. What you do is you get one of everything and then you just share. Yeah, okay, all right, <laughs> okay. All right, so we're down here like just a few yards from the beach. I had to go with something coastal, so I got some ahi tuna tacos. They're blackened and Baja style, which means I got this awesome spicy type sauce on top of them. I'm pretty pumped about these tacos, to be honest. Look, sushi grade ahi tuna. That's what I'm talking about right there, along with some avocado. Ahi. Ahi, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I used to be on a t-shirt or something. <laughs> you know what, every time I've had tuna like this, it's always just been kind of by itself, but why not on a taco? I love tacos. Let's be honest, pretty much everything's good on a taco. This is why I love coming to the coast. The seafood creations that you can find down here just beat anything you can find inland. And they just taste better in the salty breeze. I mean, let's be honest. Well, the crew has definitely left its mark. Time to head back to the park for some more adventure. Okay guys, so now that we're well fed, we're gonna head back into the park, but this time we're gonna do something that very few park visitors ever do. In fact, very few Texans ever do this. This, my friends, is gonna be an adventure. All right, so here is a map of the park. We are right up here at the Malakit Visitor Center, and our mission is to drive 60 miles all the way down to the Mansfield Channel. It's gonna be an adventure. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so the guy should be back in the trucks about now. Let's go see. Whenever I do something crazy, well, I like to invite the craziest. My adventure buddies, Brandon and Travis. Dude, beach time. Dude, Dude hey guys, what's up? Whoa. whoa, 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 what's with the noodle? What are you talking about? My favorite noodle. Where's all your stuff? Dude, dude, it's not that kind of a beach trip. I mean, this is not spring break, guys. No sandcastles? Listen, you're lucky I brought all this stuff. Like, get, it, get out of here. Come back, look, I need help loading this stuff. A trip to the Mansfield Pass is nothing to take lightly. It requires special planning and gear. So if you're gonna make a trip down to the Mansfield Pass, there are some essentials that you absolutely have to bring. Lots and lots of water, lots of water. First aid kit, always critical. But we're gonna overnight, so we're bringing some cooking gear. There's camping gear. To make a drive, there's a lot of loose sand. So four by four, truck, car, whatever, absolutely essential. Extra can of gas, a shovel, a winch should come in handy. And then uh, I brought a couple boards of extra scrap lumber so that uh, if you get stuck in the sand, you can bury this under the tire and get some traction out. Shit, what is this? Dude, all right, man, I told you we're going to an abandoned island. I mean, honestly, y'all might not make it and I don't wanna be out there alone and lonely. So <laughs> sometimes- That's disturbing. You know, you know it's not a Wilson, right? Dude, don't talk about bait in that way. Put him back in the bucket. All right. All right, fine, look, let's just go. 
You know, I've done some adventurous things in Texas, and this is up there with the best of them. Traveling beyond the end of the road. Look at that. Warning, soft sand, four-wheel drive only. Sand from here we go. And of course, Daniel is up for any adventure. But, uh, uh-oh. Who got the maps? Did we get those maps? Let me double check before we get too far <laughs> oh, from the visitor center. I mean, in your defense, you can really only go one way. <laughs> Better safe than sorry, I suppose. But it would be pretty hard to get lost on a beach. Hey, at least we don't have to call in that guide from that last national park we visited. Hey, 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 uh, Dick, uh, Day Tripper guys, it's me, it's Big Ben. Where, where you going, don't, oh, I could help, I could join you guys. It's dangerous, I mean, it could be dangerous. It's not really, it's actually very nice down there. The bur hey, birds, get, tell them I'm here, you know, like, uh, you know, you birds owe me from that one time I had that thing, you remember. The first 10 miles or so of park are pretty well traveled. Man. L-I-V-I-N, right there. We need a flag like that on our truck. Yeah, we do. But before long, the cars fade, and it's just us, the open beach, and the birds. Lots of birds. I mean, look, that's that's a few hundred brown pelicans. What kind of bird is this? I mean, he looks like a blue heron, but he's got this really pretty white neck. All right, guys, look at what we got to drive through now. Soft sand. All you can do is accelerate and don't stop. Woo. Hold on, boys. Stay in the run. Oh! While this might not seem like wilderness as we often think of it, it is its own wild ecosystem that's full of life, some of which, well, I'd like to catch for dinner. Here we are at Big Shell Beach, a known fishing spot. You think we can catch something? Always. There's always a chance. A fishing spot, let's, let's go. go. Bringing along some fishing gear is a must. Hey, it's the ocean. I mean, you never know what you might bring in, but even the beach is something like I've never seen before. So we're around mile marker 25, and this is called Big Shell Beach. Look down, and this is why. Oh, man. There's as many shells out here as there is sand. But you take a closer look, they're all fragments. It's like, you know, you, you put those rocks in those rock tumblers. Well, this is God's natural tumbler for all of these shells out here. So cool. <laughs> he got one. He got something. Let's what? go see. <laughs> Look at that. We got dinner. Dude, right off the bat, that man. That is a beautiful fish. That's a beautiful trout. Well, looks like we won't starve tonight. And if the fish are biting, well, we better get all the hooks in the water we can. Stand back, Daniel. Woohoo! I know Texas beaches sometimes get a bad rap, but this water is as clear as any. What's kind of crazy though is like, you know, we got 60 miles of beach. I have no idea if this spot's better than that spot or that spot or the spot a mile down. You just kind of park wherever you want, get some hooks in the water and see what happens. Well, man, you know, I think it's one of those deals you get Lots of luck on the first cast, and then don't catch anything for the next couple hours, so. I think it's time to pull the lines in and make a few more miles down the beach. Let's get back in the truck, shall we? <laughs> guys, while we're heading down the beach, there's a story out here. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Padre. Never heard of it. Point. Basically, we're on North Padre now and across the channel is South Padre, but legend holds that where the two Padres meet, there's a sort of celestial being who lives there, known only as the Padre. If you see the Padre roaming the dunes, then you have to go to where he is because supposedly he's trying to lead you to buried pirate treasure. I'm um, telling you guys, keep little, your eye out. I'm a little skeptical of this whole story. Uh, what are you reading, Chet? Books, all right? What Words? kind of books? Words? Coloring, coloring books. No. Yes. Don't count. <laughs> hey, I'm not sure if it's true, but there's no shortage of other treasures out here on the beach. That's cool. I wonder, it's like a deep sea buoy washed up. What is this? It's like an oil container, tanker thing. Mementos from the deep. But the largest piece of debris out here, well, that's just offshore. 
So this whole stretch of beach is famous for shipwrecks. That's probably the most famous. That is actually the USS Nicaragua, a ship oh, that sank in 1912. And you can still see it off mile marker 51. I really feel like we're the only people on earth out here. And it's amazing to not be crowded on a beach with umbrellas and sunbathers. Let's see if we can see the bay. Oh, wow. No, it's not the bay, but whoa. Look at that. Wow. I'm usually not at a loss for words, but this, this view right here is, is, is beautiful. This makes me think of Texas the way it was before anyone else was here. I know, right? I love it that it's a national park. There will never be 40-story condos right here. I mean, when my kids come, when my grandkids come, and when their grandkids come, this is basically what it's going to look like. Isn't that wild? It's awesome. I tell you, the good Lord has definitely blessed us here in Texas with some beautiful, beautiful places. More driving, more fishing. More driving, more fishing. Guys, I think we're getting pretty close, maybe a mile or two left to the end of the island. Why don't y'all go fish? I'm gonna run to the top of these dunes and see what's on the other side. Okay. All right, ready? Dig, dig! dig. Hello, Hello, Chet. Chet. Padre? Dig, dig. Chet. Dig. Right here. Yes. Right here. Behold the treasure oh. of the shore. Oh. oh, thank you, Padre. Oh. Oh. Sand dollars? <laughs> yes, Chet. Sand dollars. The currency of the island. I just kind of expected it to be gold or something. I don't know. Pirate gold? Oh, no. We ran out of that stuff centuries ago. But trust me, with sand dollars, you can live like a king. OK. You can buy stuff all the way up and down this shore. Why, I, my friend the crab is selling his sand condo about 50 dunes that way. It's very nice. He's moving to the South Padre. He's hit kind of a midlife crisis, so. I guess that's good. Yes, those sand dollars will get you far. Do I get to keep the chest? No, you don't get to keep the treasure chest. I got to fill it up and bury it for more tourists. Oh, OK. You don't have to say thank you. You're welcome. I'll just take the sand dollars then. May the Padre be with you. I'm probably not even going to tell the guys this happened. But if we've seen the Padre, well, that can only mean one thing. The end of the beach is just ahead. Guys, look out the window. The end of the beach. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Can't believe we made it. You didn't think we'd make it? Well, I knew we would make it, but I didn't know it would feel this good when we did. <laughs> yeah! yeah. Abash. Woo! That was Got awesome. Daniel. And after 60 miles, here we are, the Mansfield Pass, where North Padre and South Padre meet. So this is where the rainbow ends? Basically, this yeah. is where the rainbow ends. I suppose it is, at least for this trip. What a day. North Padre is truly an island for all. For the sea turtles and the birds, for the beach life city dwellers, and for the adventure seekers. And while towns are fun to visit, well, this place proves that you don't need civilization to have one of the best day trips in Texas. Well, guys, this is the end of the beach and the end of the episode. So I will see all y'all out on the road, but you know, who needs roads, really? You know, all you need is a beach. Bye, con Dios, amigos. We've been in canyons, we've been in pine forests, we've been in the high country deserts. I'll tell you what, man, this is up there with the best of them. I'm in fire hands. Oh crap, me too. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you, the day tripper guys? I know, uh, I, I, hey, I, hey, Mr. Mr. Crab, I need, uh, no, he's gone. What? I don't know, he's taking off without me, he must not know it was me. A nice truck. Wish I had a truck. Wish I uh, wish I had a friend, actually. Well, no, okay, Mr. Crab, you count. You count. It's all right. Come here. It's okay. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. 
or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.